Aging is a really important area in science and medicine simply because there's a vast number of people who are over the age of 65 currently and this population is poised to more than double in about 20 to 30 years and aging has been strongly associated with mitochondrial dysfunction. In fact, there is a theory of, theory of aging called the mitochondrial theory of aging which suggests that mitochondrial dysfunction contributes to the process of aging. And given the expanded demographic of older human beings over the next two decades, and given the fact that we currently do not fully understand how to uh, improve or restore mitochondrial function back to normalcy, this assumes an extremely important area of research and understanding. Mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell that provide energy to every single cell. So every single cell in the body located in every single organ in the body has to perform specific function and mitochondria provide the energy for that. So I would say mitochondria plays an extremely important role in maintaining cellular health. Since mitochondria uh, are the powerhouse of the cell and provide energy that gives the cell its life and also because mitochondrial function becomes impaired in, in aging, uh, this would suggest that cellular function is compromised if mitochondrial ability to deliver energy is compromised. So from that perspective, given the fact that every cell needs energy, and mitochondria is ubiquitously present in every cell and every organ of the body. It could have broad ranging impact on cellular function or lead to dysfunction in, in aging. New opportunities to improve mitochondrial health back to normal could have profound effects on improving uh, cellular health and function in general and that could contribute to an improved generalized health in people. Mitochondrial dysfunction is a part of aging in people and it has been strongly implicated in many components or complications with aging to do with muscle strength, cognition, uh, cardiac function, insulin resistance, inflammation, etc. These are cardinal defects in aging. Improving mitochondrial function in aging could have profound implications for improving age-related comorbidities and it would be very exciting to see what could happen. Glutathione is the body's preferred antioxidant protein simply because it is present in the largest abundance within cells. And if the body has picked this antioxidant protein as a protective shield, then glutathione is important for the needs of the body. Glutathione levels have been reported to be deficient in many conditions. Some of them include uh, older people or the process of aging, diabetic human beings, people infected with HIV, uh, conditions such as Alzheimer's disease, uh, fatty liver disease, uh, obesity, metabolic syndrome, and even prediabetes. Because glutathione reverses oxidative stress, improving glutathione levels could improve uh, the oxidative stress status of the patient. Now, in the aging, there is a theory called the free radical theory of aging, which states that the process of aging is contributed to by excess free radicals, which lead to oxidative stress. So it would be really tempting to think about the benefits restoration of glutathione can provide to the older human being. Older humans have a high risk of developing glutathione deficiency and the fact that they have elevated oxidative stress which is neutralized by glutathione suggests that glutathione is being used up to lower oxidative stress 
But if you think about it, the concentration of a protein depends on a balance between how much is consumed and how much is produced. So in my group, we studied this to understand whether there's a problem on the production end. And we found that there is a critical deficiency in the ability of the cell to manufacture glutathione. And looking deeper, we found this happens because two of the amino acids, cysteine and glycine, were in short supply, which led us to think that deficiency of cysteine and glycine is what leads to glutathione deficiency. We corrected cysteine and glycine deficiency by replacing them in the diet orally and found that in a two-week period, uh, cysteine and glycine levels normalized to levels seen in younger humans. And this was sufficient to restore the manufacture of glutathione back to normal and correct its intracellular levels back to normal uh, to the level seen in younger people. So there is a novel nutritional approach which could correct glutathione deficiency rapidly in older people. In my group, we have studied glutathione deficiency in several conditions, and some of these include uh, aging older people, uh, patients with type 2 diabetes, patients with uh, the HIV infection. And in all three conditions, we found uh, similarities, uh, meaning that two of the building blocks of glutathione, cysteine and glycine, were in short supply. And providing both cysteine and glycine in the diet allowed the body's cells to manufacture glutathione back toward normal. In the aging population, this completely normalizes glutathione concentrations, whereas in diabetes and in the HIV patients, there is a significant improvement in glutathione levels toward normalization. And so the question that we had in our group is, could glutathione deficiency be responsible for mitochondrial impairment and oxidative stress? And we found that when we corrected the glutathione deficiency within a two-week period, there was a dramatic improvement in oxidative stress toward normal and a recovery of mitochondrial function toward normal. This is genuinely exciting because this is the first human demonstration that it is actually possible using a nutritional intervention to improve glutathione, uh, which can normalize mitochondrial function in people. We have performed and published short-term studies in improving glutathione levels in people. In our studies in uh, older people, we uh, improved glutathione over a two-week period, and we found that this was able to significantly improve and normalize mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation, which was impaired in the first place. It also lowered insulin resistance very significantly. It lowered elevated fatty acid concentrations and improved oxidative stress. Interestingly, when we studied glutathione deficiency in HIV-infected people, we found a similar pattern of very profound improvement in mitochondrial ability to oxidize both fat and sugar. And we also found that this improved muscle weakness in HIV patients uh, very significantly. It lowered insulin resistance and also improved inflammation, which is a form of tissue irritation, uh, which is present in a lot of conditions, uh, which includes HIV. So collectively, we are finding slowly that improving glutathione appears to have important health benefits in those populations where glutathione levels were initially low. We are very excited uh, because we have been investigating and trying to understand the role of glutathione in specific populations. So we have completed uh, two open-label clinical trials, more exploratory trials, to try and understand the impact of glutathione. And one of these is in HIV patients who were supplemented for 12 weeks 
and we want to understand what the health benefits of this could be. A second study supplemented uh, the precursors of glutathione for a period of 24 weeks. And again, we just recently completed that and that data is being analyzed. And finally, the most exciting study we've done is a randomized clinical trial, which also just recently completed. Those data are being processed. And obviously, when the results are available, they'll be reported in scientific meetings, published in journals. And we are all very excited to see what these data will show us in a more informed way about the potential benefits of glutathione on health.